Hi, I'm Mike. And I'm John. And we are back at the Rock West Laboratory because I have some hard-hitting questions about carbon fiber and fiberglass and Kevlar that I'm going to ask you. Shoot away. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of shooting, John, when people hear Kevlar, yes. they think of uh, bullet-resistant vests, bulletproof vests. Right. A lot of the Kevlar parts we sell here are not bullet-resistant. They are not. Kevlar comes in two grades, and the grade that we use and sell is for composite manufacturing, not for ballistics. Ballistic Kevlars are usually woven in very tight weaves, and the fibers are stronger. Okay, so what is the advantage? I know we have some Kevlar and carbon plates, mm -hmm. right? Kevlar and carbon are combined. Right. What's the advantage of doing that over just a pure carbon? Plate. So Kevlar is very abrasion resistant, so it's really hard to cut, and so it's also very hard to abrade with sandpaper or road or something like that. So it can take strikes, it can take rubbing, and it just doesn't want to break down. So when you combine the stiffness of carbon fiber with the toughness of Kevlar, you get a panel that will take hits but won't shatter. It won't shatter, yeah. that's the key. So if you're looking for something shatterproof, Put a little Kevlar in it. What do we have right here? We have an example. <laughs> Let's see it. <laughs> okay. So this panel, yeah. you can see it has a nice kind of an off-white color stripe down the middle of it. This uh -huh. actually has three layers of Kevlar in between two layers of carbon fiber. Okay. So we got carbon fiber on both sides. What that does is it makes a very stiff panel but it doesn't want to fracture and break into pieces if it gets hit. Without the Kevlar, mm -hmm. if it, we replaced with carbon fiber, mm -hmm. would it be as stiff or stiffer? It should be stiffer. So in a panel with the same number of plies, all carbon fiber would be stiffer. Gotcha. What would be the difference between a panel of pure carbon and fiberglass? Well, fiberglass is automatically a little bit more flexible. Okay. It doesn't have the same stiffness modulus that carbon fiber does. So it automatically is more flexible. You can kind of see the difference here. We have a pure Kevlar plate, yeah. okay? And it is very flexible. If we have a pure carbon fiber plate, it's a lot stiffer. These aren't the same thicknesses, but they're pretty close. And you can you can tell the difference just by definitely just by flexing it. Okay. Excellent. And fiberglass would be somewhere in between. We had one other question by uh, one of our viewers. Mm -hmm. They wanted to know, is it possible to wrap uh, carbon fiber with fiberglass or vice versa? Can you wrap fiberglass with carbon fiber? Of course. You can mix and match any of these materials at any time as long as the resins that you use are compatible with each other. So John, what's, what's key then if we are uh, fabricating a panel with multiple materials? Uh, the key is balance. So if you have one material on, on half of it and another material in the other half, you could get differences in thermal expansion. Okay. You could also get difference in flex. So it might flex in one direction but not the other. It might break sooner if you go one direction or the other. All right. So it's good to have balance to where you might want to just have carbon fiber on both sides and fiberglass in the middle or vice versa. Fiberglass okay. has many purposes other than just being easy to work with. It can be an electrical insulator. It can also work with radomes so you can see through it. It might be RF transparent. So there's a lot of reasons why you would use fiberglass and in some cases you can use them together right. uh, without any detriment. Okay, so again fiberglass is not conductive. Carbon fiber is? Correct. What about Kevlar? Kevlar is not conductive okay. at all. It actually can be used as a radome material for low frequency radio frequencies. Um, but again, it's not very stiff, so it's not a good structural member. All right, so those are some of the plates. I also noticed we have some fabric here. Right. Some uh, carbon. Well, the interesting thing about these materials is you'll notice before we do anything to them, they're all very flexible, right? Correct. So all the materials are that way. So woven or braided or even unidirectional, they're all very flexible. So it's not until we add the, the resin to it, whether it's epoxy or polyester, vinyl ester, that's when it becomes stiff and hard. And, okay. and this is just the supporting material. Some of the unique things that we can do with these, carbon fiber is obviously the strongest or the stiffest. So that's really good for structural parts. Okay. And fiberglass is very inexpensive. So that's really good for tools and for parts that uh, you just want something really easy to 
mold and get a shape out of it, but really inexpensive. And if you didn't want it to conduct elect electricity, of right? Of course. Fiberglass is yes. non-conductive. Right. All right. And then Kevlar is good for the abrasion stuff. So in other words, you can put this on the outside layer and have a good abrasion layer if you have Kevlar or carbon fiber on the inside to create the structure. I heard a story that um, some high-end race cars were actually using carbon fiber axles with Kevlar in it. So if they actually shattered off, the wheel right. came off, the Kevlar would hold it on. Right, so they use a rope or a braid inside of the axle itself. So if they hit a wall, the wheel doesn't fly off and, and hurt another driver. We want it's that to pretty happen. neat stuff. Yeah, cool. What about processing uh, carbon fiber versus Kevlar and fiberglass? Any downsides? They all process basically the same until they're finished. Then it becomes a little bit more difficult. Uh, as far you as lost me there. <laughs> and so we can mold okay. them all very similarly. Okay. But when we want to trim them to shape, that's where we might run into some problems. All right, and how so? For example, we have this Kevlar tube right here. Yep. We laid it up exactly like we would a carbon fiber or a fiberglass tube, but then we cut it in half or we cut the ends off and you see this fraying right here? Oh yeah. We don't see that with fiberglass. Fiberglass is very clean, it's very easy to sand, and it cuts with abrasion. But because Kevlar is, uh, we use it to prevent abrasion, it just frays on the edges. Okay. So we have to do special things to make that work. So one of the tricks is wet sanding. I also use super glue occasionally to hold the fibers in place and then wet sand it off. I've seen you do that many times. And then it, that makes a very pretty surface. So. Uh, Kevlar is more difficult to use. Carbon fiber cuts very similarly to fiberglass. It is uh, a little bit more abrasive and will ruin tools faster. Uh, each one of them kind of have their own given type. Fiberglass is glass, so okay. it will ruin tools. Uh, carbon fiber does as well. So, so you will go through tools faster. All right, and what about the fabric? I know when I've uh, cut carbon fiber and fiberglass, I was able to use scissors, just yeah. Yeah. shearing scissors. If someone wants to cut Kevlar, do they need to do anything special? Um, it's nice to have serrated scissors to cut Kevlar because it kind of holds the fibers. Otherwise, sometimes it just pushes the fibers out while you're cutting it. So it takes special grip strength and special technique to cut Kevlar, but it can be done. But right. sharp scissors are the key. Okay. No dull scissors. Here, that kid's no dull scissors. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, <laughs> If you have any other questions, feel free to email John or me. And until next time, have a great one.